Hello, YouTubers. This is Half Man, Half Cichlid. I've been in the aquarium hobby for 55 years and have dealt almost exclusively the last 25 years with African cichlids. Uh, recently, I joined various Facebook circles and introduced cichlid keepers around the world to my 340-gallon and 200-gallon African cichlid aquariums. After posting a video of my 340-gallon African cichlid tank on those Facebook sites, the overwhelming question I received back was, tell me what your secrets are. And hence is the, the origin of the topic for this particular video. What are the, the secrets for a monster African cichlid show tank? Over the years, we've all seen videos on YouTube of self-proclaimed best African cichlid show aquarium. And we've also heard a number of opinions on what that particular owner of that aquarium did to, in order to achieve that beautiful aquarium. We've heard things, uh, a lot of times, food, for example, is a secret uh, uh, ingredient or an in-tank background or the type of, uh, of uh, canister filters that are being used. Uh, I'm going to do a, something a little bit different in this video. I'm going to talk about a whole package of things that, I've, that I'm doing that I've evolved over the last 25 years with African cichlids that I believe, at least for me, working together have given me what I consider to be a, a monster African cichlid uh, show tank that I'm very proud of. Many of us have opinions and perhaps even secrets on this topic, but those I am going to discuss and share with you are those that have worked for me. Some are obvious, not, others are not so obvious. And I've grouped what I'm calling these secrets into various categories like food, tank hygiene, and a number of others that you'll be exposed to here shortly. first set of secrets that I'm going to cover with you are those that relate to the aquarium tank itself, the equipment, and uh, the decor. The first thing is you start with a really large tank so the fish grow big and uh, they maximize their colors in that uh, environment. The, ne the next item that's important is a sump. In my case, I have a 65-gallon sump supporting the 340-gallon aquarium. Within that 65-gallon sump, I have five or six media chambers. One of the very one important ones is some K1 called Nest Media. In the center section of the sump, I've got uh, polyester pads, I've got bio balls, I've got sponges, and I probably have about 10 gallons of roots for my pothos plants. In the third section of the sump, I've got the final polishing polyester. I've got charcoal, and I've got the return pumps that send the water back to the aquarium. I also have two years' worth of pothos growing out of the sump. Some of the leaves are nearly a foot in size, and with the, with the 10 gallon root ball within the sump, this is a major uh, major help in keeping the nitrates down and the water purity up. I also use crushed coral and I leave it less than an inch deep so it's easy to vacuum and remove detritus. In this next section we're going to cover water quality and tank hygiene and its importance in a monster African cichlid show tank. African cichlids require hard or very hard water and fortunately, I'm blessed with the water out of the tap being very, fairly hard. Likewise, African cichlids like uh, alkaline water, and I'm blessed with having alkaline water straight from my tap. I, I do fewer water changes than you might expect. I do 60% every three weeks, and between the pothos and the water changes, I'm able to maintain my nitrates at about 25 parts per million. I also do a thorough gravel clean every time I change water in the aquarium to remove detritus. I think this is critical to remove uh, 
and, and keep your nitrates down. Here's your typical sump, not mine, but you can see that in this case, there's about seven different chambers of media and filter floss, et cetera. And they're very visible and, and easy to change, even with the sump running. This is one of a distinct advantage over canister filters. I use Epsom salts, uh, a cup per 50 gallons, and I consider this, along with some dietary uh, changes that I've implemented, to be responsible for eliminating uh, Malawi bloat in my aquariums. In my 340 gallon, I have seven bristle nose placos, and these little guys are the real workhorses that keep all my tank decorations clean. In fact, in the last two and a half years, I have not had to scrub any of the plants or any of the rocks in my entire aquarium. In terms of temperature, I keep my aquarium between 76 and 78 degrees. This, Im this improves the oxygen in the water and reduces aggression. The next section is food, diet, and feeding. This is a very controversial area. What I'll do is go through what, what I've been successful with, and in particular, the last two and a half years, where with some changes, I have not had even one case of uh, bloat in my 600 gallons of aquariums. The first important point is that higher protein for Lake Malawi cichlids is not good. They have special digestive needs, and uh, have some peacocks have different needs than, than uh, Mabuna. So don't look for the highest protein food because this will work against your fish's health. I've completely eliminated krill and ocean plankton from the diet of my African cichlids and any pellet foods that are high in these materials. And since I've made those changes, along with adding Epsom salts, I have not had one case of Malawi bloat in two and a half years. I do uh, use cobalt cichlid pellets exclusively and have done so for the last two and a half years and have been very successful. By the way, I have no financial interest in promoting this uh, product. I do use uh, automatic fish faders on both my large aquariums and uh, I feed grown fish once a day and fish that are still growing uh, two times a day. A very important section, I feel, is you know, how we source, select, and raise the African cichlids to become uh, show specimens that are compatible with each other. First of all, have a strategy for the colors, the sizes of the fish, the types, and the compatibilities, and stick with it. Don't get sucked into buying fish because they're on sale, for example. There are various strategies for sourcing your fish. In my particular case, uh, I, I've developed an approach using Craigslist. I have a video on this subject you may want to uh, see. This is my 200 gallon grow out tank and you can see fish in this tank anywhere from five inches to one and a half inches. And they, and they get along pretty well together. And this, this is uh, where I feed more often and uh, groom, so to speak, uh, younger specimens to eventually transfer to my uh, larger aquarium when they're ready. Occasionally fish do die in the large tank or sometimes, like in this case here, you can see there's a OB Ali who's getting kind of uh, uh, as a shrunken belly. I do have to uh, uh, dispose of these fish appropriately. Some final notes on uh, tips for monster African cichlid show tank, and in particular, fish selection and raising. Uh, I always buy at least two of each type of fish, just in case uh, one dies. I'll still have one specimen left of a, of a prize variety to move into my large tank. Uh, I regularly rotate spectacular fish from the grow-out tank into the show tank when a uh, spot opens up, again, due to a death or having to cull out a sick specimen. Uh, I also essentially buy all male fish uh, unless, I think in one case, I have Placidochromus phenochilis, which uh, uh, is one of my favorite fish I'm raising uh, 
uh, hoping to have uh, some females that will uh, breed with uh, the male fish in the future. And lastly, to have a spectacular tank, you've got to solve the bloat problem because otherwise, uh, you know, to invest time and money and, and growth of spectacular uh, specimens only to lose them to the bloat is heartbreaking and certainly takes away from achieving the ultimate goal that uh, we're after, which is a, a uh, monster African cichlid show tank. When it comes to bloat, we've all had this heartbreaking uh, experience. This concludes my YouTube video on secrets for a monster African cichlid uh, a tank. I hope it was helpful. And if leave questions, please, if there's something you would like more information on uh, that was contained within this video or any questions you might have. Thank you.